Hello and welcome back and today I want to do a hardware overview of the Terramaster D5. It's an external Thunderbolt 3 RAID solution. Now this not you know this isn't the first time I've done a video on this on the other YouTube channel I have done an unboxing of this where I've talked a lot about what it can do and what it can't do but today I kind of really wanted to focus on that hardware. Of course we're talking about the software, how you set up your RAID and stuff like that but ultimately I want to talk about whether this is a viable purchase and whether it can serve as a suitable alternative to things like Lacey, GTEC, Eureka, you know, large end kind of Thunderbolt 3 RAID solutions. Because this device kind of has a little bit of compromise about it. it has, you know, it's not perfect, certainly. It's a great cost effective solution. And I will argue that you're not going to find better value for money right now. But what I will say, is there are things and ex there are expectations of this that just don't get fully realized. So let's get straight off the bat. And again, when you do get this, it arrives in a standard Terramaster retail box. We've done it before. Um, there's an accessory box. There's the external PSU. There's instructions. You've got your power supplier there, quite a big one uh, for a Thunderbolt device. You've got the Thunderbolt 3 cable. You've got screws for two and a half inch and three and a half inch media. You've got a screwdriver for your installation, warranty information, everything you're ever going to need really to set the device up. Also, it arrives uh, with no hard drive or SSD media, but it supports the very latest hard drives. Um, again, I would advise RAID enabled um, or RAID suitable hard drives. So, you get Iron Wolf at the moment. Um, if you go for some of the Iron Wolf series, you will get good RAID performance out of those. On top of that, the device, of course, supports the latest SSDs. If you have a look at the specification sheets from Terramaster, you will see that this device populated with SSDs in a RAID 0, which is a fairly unsafe setup, if you ask me. But you will get over a 1,000 megabytes per second with the right media and hardware RAID, in, uh, RAID environment. I say hardware RAID. This is not technically a hardware RAID device because although it is a RAID device, you will need to utilize software on your PC or Mac system. You go to Terramaster website, you download the drivers and RAID management software, and it will allow you to configure the RAID via that third-party software. But you are still setting the device up with a third party. So the RAID will be built on it, and then you can take it away, but this is not a hardware RAID device in the same way that the 2-bay was a hardware RAID device. Now, this is a big, big deal for a number of you out there that may buy this by this thinking it's like this this two bay device here has got hardware raid now hardware raid can mean different things it used to mean there's a pcie card and a dedicated um kind of roc raid on chip or soc software on chip that was doing all of that maintenance and in an example of this two bay you can look at the bottom and see there is that little dial right there where you can sit, set it to the right configuration that you want to use. And then if you click the reset pin, it initializes the whole device, deletes any data that's on it, and sets up your RAID for you. Now that might seem a bit unsafe, but at least the RAID is being conducted by this box. So when you disconnect it safely, you can carry it along and connect it to a new system. And the RAID is being handled by this. Now, the five bay, Thanks to that RAID management software and the Thunderbolt 3 software drivers that you install, you'll be able to configure the RAID, but the configuration is happening on this system here. The RAID is still being handled by this, but I know that's not the same as what a number of you are looking for. Because if you look at this device, you see that there's no physical RAID switch, which means this device, when setting up your RAID, isn't that much different to ones like Drobo, again, Lacey, and GTEC because all of those none of those arrive with a little flicky switch they are all having their RAID managed by the connected system and although the RAID is still handled by this that might not be what you're looking for because a number of you despite the rudimentariness and practical old-fashionedness of that little switch you prefer having that level of control rather than this because what you want is a RAID do your job shut up and the ability to you know, host RAID migration to enable tweaked caching in the background might be beneficial, but you might not want that. So do bear in mind that with this 5-bay, you aren't getting the same as the 2-bay. It's a very different setup there, which might put a few of you off. Now, this 5-bay chassis with its weird little handle on the top, which I've never quite understood, but a lot of photo video editors have told me that portability is, of course, key in their industries, where a lot of them work in off-site. 
uh, some of them where they're moving stuff from place to place or desk to desk, this mobility can be useful. I personally, if this was filled with hard drives, I would be reluctant to use a little handle, but I know everyone's different. These trays are plastic in design and they've got screw holes for two and a half inch and three and a half inch media. And you can install different drives inside this. You can put in hard drives in some bays and SSDs in others and let the software create separate RAID environments. And even though it says it supports RAID migration, I'd still be reluctant to install four drives inside here in a RAID 5 environment and use the software to add another drive to the array. You can probably change up from a RAID 5 to a RAID 6 with the same relative ease, although quite long, that you would switch from a RAID 1 to a RAID 5, but I still wouldn't try RAID expansion rather than RAID migration on this device and that software. No your limits and its limits. It's got LED lights there built into the front to give you some idea about how and when drives are being accessed, but the trays can't be locked. They're quite rugged, so it's very hard to pull that tray out of there without it being an unlock. But what I will say is if you do lift up that handle, it automatically removes the drive from the SATA port inside. So I would have quite liked a locking mechanism there on the front, but again, this is a cost-effective solution. So, you know, you choose your battles. Uh, Ventilation-wise, a huge amount of ventilation built into the base of this device, underneath all of those hard drive bays, but not a huge amount of ventilation anywhere else, which is quite common with Terra Master NAS, and generally they don't get too hot. Um, they are uh, a lot more metal on these than some other devices, but I know in, in a lot of production circles, they quite like that because metal can be quite cool in a temperature sense. Um, on top of that, it is quite contained for a five bay device. I mean, again, we compare this against, and I showed this in the previous video, if you compare this against the five bay NAS, it is just as compact as that five bay NAS. It's a pinch taller, not just with the handle, it's a pinch taller there at the top, but it is still a very, very similar size overall compared with the two of them. And they both arrive with, you know, quite good cool cooling measures built into the base as well as those two rear fans. If you look at the rear of this device, we can take a good look at the port connections and active cooling. Now, we have got those two fans here that again will kind of adjust with internal temperatures and that software has got a few extra bells and whistles built into even though let's face it it's pretty much for rate configurations um, but those two cooling fans will keep things cool they're not the quietest fans and again you generally have to pay a premium for more quiet rate devices um, but if you if that's not a big problem or you're not going to be in huge close proximity to this bear in mind done about three cables i think get to about three to five meters before they start having a latency problem um I would say that the noise level on this is what I would expect from something arriving at this price point, around 550, 600 pounds. And if we take a look at the rest of the ports, you can see that there is a display port there just underneath the PSU. And that display port, thanks to um, daisy chaining, will allow you to add a monitor to a single chain of devices on your Thunderbolt Mac or PC system, as well as two Thunderbolt ports there on the base that allow you to not only connect this device via Thunderbolt to your PC or Mac system, but also daisy chain other Thunderbolt devices. So a single line of Thunderbolt um, connected devices can all be accessible via a single Thunderbolt uh, host machine. But bear in mind that is still one person that can connect to this at any given time. This ain't no Thunderbolt NAS. This is one to one. Whether you're using it for live video editing directly on the device of 4K 1080p or raw photos, or if you're using it as a backup, Thunderbolt 3 is going to be great for that. But bear in mind, that although Thunderbolt has a reported speed of 40 gigabits per second, so again, 4,000 megabytes per second potential max, you're going to have to install the right media inside this. And even if you install enterprise level hard drives with 250 to 260 megabytes per second each, with an increase with each drive of around 70 to 100 megs per drive, you're still going to max out to five or six hundred with additional hard drives with ssds you're going to get close to around 1000 1100 but you're still not going to skyrocket and max out that thunderbolt connection so if you are going to daisy chain that might be you know in your corner but if you're going to be utilizing sata based media as this is a sata device you may find that a little bit underwhelming but overall i'm quite pleased with it there aren't a lot of Thunderbolt 3 RAID systems out there. 
um, when you do look for Thunderbolt RAID solutions, they're quite expensive. It was one of the main reasons that the Drivo 5D3 did so well, even though the company as a whole has become very, very quiet. The reason is um, that Thunderbolt RAID solutions, once they reach a certain level, kind of have a creator tax. They're made vastly more expensive. If you look at any of the solutions from, again, Lacey, GSEC, Drobo, whoever, and they produce five and eight bay solutions, Despite the fact between the two of them, it's only three bays and a little bit more handling in the back end, the price difference suddenly takes a jump. And TerraMaster isn't that much different to everyone else, whether that is because of the creator tax or if that's because the architecture of needing more advanced RAID on chips or software on chips to handle those larger RAID arrays, who's to say? But what I will say is, once again, at this price point, this is still a very, very competitive device to be going for if you're looking at an external Thunderbolt 3 store, um, storage enclosure. It's not perfect, and it's probably never going to be perfect at that price point. You're going to have to pay two times, maybe even three times, to get the perfect version of this. And I know that software raid might put some of you off. I'm looking forward to seeing the 8-bay version of this, as well as looking at some of their new 10GBE solutions that are coming up on the horizon. But... Ultimately, when it comes to buying a cost-effective but reliable Thunderbolt 3 solution for your data storage, this is a good choice. And once again, TerraMaster, kind of one of the faster evolving companies that I've seen in recent years, have produced a great, another great solution for me. Now, I'm hoping to do a software overview of this in the next week or so. I'm currently recording this um, during lockdown uh, because of COVID here in the UK. So you know, resources are limited to me on a physical level and how often I can make these videos, so you may have to wait a little bit longer for that content, but I will get it out there to you. If you are interested in getting hold of one of these bad boys, then do visit the link in the description to span.com, as well as the hardware review there on NAS Compares as well. And do also bear in mind, it's very, very important, that there is a non-Thunderbolt version of this called the D5330. Now, that is a USB 3.1 Gen 2 version of this or just standard usb 3 depending on your own setup the result is this is the thunderbolt version that is the usb version if you get the wrong one they may seem similar but they're not and you will ultimately lose out so make sure you choose the right one d5 for thunderbolt d5330 for usb but otherwise i hope you enjoyed this click like if you enjoyed it click subscribe to learn more and i'll see you next time